One of my strongest childhood memories is the boredom of photography. I loved my grandparents, a well-ordered, calm, loving oasis in the often chaotic whirlwind of our parents' lives. But the trade-off was always the photographs. Harry never went anywhere without his cameras, his lenses, his light meters, slung around his neck, stuffed into carry bags, more in the boot of the car. Although his first love was black and white landscapes, he photographed everything that meant something to him, and that included us. In my child's mind, we stood or sat for what seemed felt like hours, waiting for the light to become just right, moving as instructed or holding ourselves still. And I never understood why he needed to take 20-something photos from three different cameras. And if it wasn't us, it was something else. A trip to buy an ice cream could suddenly be interrupted by the need to photograph a hill or a tree, again waiting for the light to become just right, while hopes for ice cream receded further and further into the distance. My grandfather's photography started when he was a teenager, just before the First World War, when he had built himself his first camera. He showed it to me one day, a small plain wooden box, and his first set of photographs, bleary brown images of his friends on a scout camp. Photography was still a relatively new technology, few people had cameras, it still had an aura of magic. It suited my grandfather's meticulous nature as he spent hours in his dark room, a mysterious place from which we were categorically banned, painstakingly developing his prize-winning photographs. My grandfather's great love of photography lasted him his whole life. As he grew older, his subjects changed. When he moved into the retirement village, they built him a dark room. In exchange, he chronicled the life of the village. He started to take colour seriously and branched into flower photography. The results were so beautiful, they were turned into greeting cards. His whole adult life, he saw the world through the lens of a camera. The year he turned 80, he took his first balloon ride, not as a passenger, but in exchange for photographs of the event.